Welcome to this review of Shakespeare's Hamlet. Today I'm going to go ahead and talk about this. Hamlet. Now Hamlet is the longest play of Shakespeare. It's Shakespeare's longest play. It's six hours long. In fact, when the person who tried to make a film version of the play wanted to make one every line put inside, well, they ended up going ahead and turning it over for an hour, which is, well, standard movies are one to two hours long. And so what they ended up doing is just that they cut off so many lines that it didn't really act a lot like Hamlet at all. So what happened? Hamlet itself is actually a pretty interesting story, as well as being the longest, mainly because, number one, he's probably wanted to grieve about Hamlet, his son who died at the age of 12. Number two, he wanted to talk about some of the succession and the themes of what England was going through at the time of writing. And number three, he just wanted to sell some extra things to make an extra profit at the Globe Theatre. Good thing, good thing is, if you are a playwright and you are somehow the owner of your own stage, well then, you don't have to worry about rent at all, my my friend. You basically want to go ahead and have maximum profit. You, I think that's actually how Shakespeare became one of the most successful ones, a uh, successful boss of entire days. Now, to understand the themes of this, you actually have to know a bit of the context of Shakespeare, as a Shakespearean era. Now, Shakespeare lived during the uh, Elizabethan and the James, um, the James era. It was called, at least I believe it was called the James Era. I'm wrong about this. Tell me in the comments below. Correct me in the comments below here. Um, Shakespeare wrote Hamlet at the time, just a few years before Queen Elizabeth I was dead. And this is basically what he did. He wanted to go ahead and write about the succession of the family. When at the end of Hamlet itself, in fact, what happened was that well, the entire royal family of Hamlet died, and so who was going to be the successor? Well, Norway came. To, the king of Norway came in. The prince of Norway came in, so that was pretty convenient. He became the next king. But for England, of course, they want an English king. And so they had to go and find a new heir fast. Good thing is, who's the closest relative, legitimate relative, of Queen Elizabeth I? And they found out that was a Scottish king named King James the Fourth of Scotland. And... He would become the King James the First of England. Oh, and he was also the King of Ireland, so he was the King of three countries, and I think this is the original United Kingdom. <sighs> Saying that aside, of course, lots and lots of other things started happening towards King James the F First of England and Ireland, and King James the Fourth of Scotland. That's now, it's pretty confusing if you ask me. Anyways, all of this actually goes ahead and tells us a lot about Hamlet as an actual play itself as well, too. The entire royal family of Denmark is dead, and so, of course, there's a lot of talks about here as well, too. Other things that are talked inside Hamlet that are not explicitly mentioned are the Catholicism and the Christianity. Christ as I'm, I mean, Protestants. Protestants and Catholics were pretty two different radical groups of Christianity. They're both, they call, both call themselves Christians, but... They had similar beliefs, except for certain parts. The Catholics themselves actually had a little, little less moral view of the world, according to the Protestants, while the Catholics called the Protestants a less moral view, a less exciting view. In fact, I think it's also a less fair view as well, too. The Protestants are a little too harsh on, I guess, sinful souls. But here's the thing. This play also goes ahead and mixes up the mixes up the ideas of Catholicism and Christianity. Now, Catholicism is Catholics say that there's this thing called purgatory. It's basically like a mini version of hell where you did some sins, but they're not that bad that you actually deserve hell. All you have to do is burn yourself to burn burn the sins away. After that, depending on how minor that sin was or how many minor sins you did, you could go up to heaven. But uh, yeah, so. King, old King Hamlet was stuck in purgatory, he explained, and that's a, Chris, that's a Catholic idea, a Catholic idea as well, too. But then, Protestants comes in when it comes to, like, the, uh, the refusal of the burial of Ophelia because she committed suicide, like, she put herself into a lake and she drowned herself, as well as other things about Protestantism as well, too. So, these ideas, these two religions clash. Hamlet calls himself a Protestant, Christian, but I think he's a Protestant. But then again, he's also... He all, William Shakespeare also put some Catholic ideas inside this as well, too. He probably did this to go ahead and address the moral issues, the religious issue inside England. It was because of Queen Elizabeth I that Catholics and Protestants were actually had peace at the time when Catholics were actually purged a lot. And so, of course, this goes up and gives us a mess of relationships to go ahead and untangle. Hamlet himself is actually one of the most interesting characters as well, too. Unlike Laertes and 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 
layer to use and rolls and crowns sorry, Fort and Brass, then you can go ahead. He doesn't think of things as especially right, like white and black. He thinks, and morally wise, he thinks that they have reasons to say that they're also right, but they're also wrong. He thinks they're the gray areas, but he can use reason to determine how gray it is. Is it more black or is it more light? But sometimes, of course, reason is flawed. If you completely go on reason, well, then you're going to have unreasonable decisions at times as well, too. Or at least you take too long to make a decision. And this proves to be the case when after lots of times reason goes ahead and wins for Hamlet, Hamlet finally can't can't use reason to go ahead and do a laertes or he can't use reason to actually think that wait, is this is this is a murder a sin and avenging your dad an actual something that will get you a ticket to heaven? Is Gertrude actually going ahead and part of this? I will never know because reason can't answer those things. And reason can't tell you if Gertrude helped you help your uncle your mom held to your uncle, go ahead and kill your dad. No, reason can't do that. Your mom probably going to lie, but you have no idea if she's going to lie or tell the truth. And so, of course, he eventually decided that fate was a way better decider in these things. He decided to have fate decide whether he lived or died, but he would decide that he would do a Laertes. And if he survived, thank you, fate. But if he didn't, well, too bad, but I guess it's just fate. I can't do anything about it. Hamlet brings up the most com- the Hamlet the play himself brings up the most complicated debates in all of literature. The play is arguably the most quoted one of all time, and we got so many questions about literary about literary questions about the play itself, and also questions about the human morals. We have to go ahead and ask ourselves about our own selves, and this play also is a great way to dissect your own ideas. It's a tangle of massive relationships, and we're told we just have to untangle them. Problem is, there are missing threads, and so we have to go ahead and figure them out, out as well, too. Unfortunately, Shakespeare is long dead, and even if he was alive, he would have refused to answer these questions. But it ends up, but it all ends up with, who's there? Who's there? If that question was ever asked, well then, this play would have been very different, or may, may not even have existed at all. And that's literally a review of Shakespeare's Hamlet. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope to see you guys soon. Until next time, Chanel, please. Bye-bye.